hungry, I can eat that guitar. Well, if they don't like this song, we'll both eat it. And make broth out of strings. Give them the works, Roy. The cowboy and the senorita met in Rosarita one night not so long ago. The cowboy and the senorita made the night much sweeter with words like I love you so. He said life on the range is such a lonely life. Won't you pack up your shawl, acquire a draw, and be a cowboy's wife? They marry, and their plans all carry. They've a little cowboy, and oh, what a kid. Why don't folks do like the cowboy and the senorita did? He said, don't send me back, back to that lone prairie. I've got a saddle for two, for me and for you. Come right away with me. They headed for the church and wedded. Bought a little rental, and that's where they hid. Why don't folks do like the cowboy and the senorita did? Look at my suit, gravy and potatoes. What do you intend to do about this outrage? Police adjustments will be made. That's not enough. I demand this ox be fired. But it just began. Either he goes or I'll take my family to the cafe across the street. And I don't like singing with my meals. You heard him? Take off that uniform. You through, too. You mean we don't even eat? Look at those dishes. You should pay me. Come on, Teddy Bear. He's got a good case. Roy, as far as I'm concerned, this steady work ain't very tasty. How would you know? <laughs> well, the taste I got back there was pretty sour. And I'm warning you, if we don't get grub steak in Bonanza, I'm hocking my horse and saddle and going to prospect. Well, you can count me in on that. What'd you find? Oh, a little old cheap bracelet. What do you figure it's worth? Oh, a couple of nickels or about a dime. No more cracks about gold. I'm cured. Looks like Mr. Craig Allen's a man to see about a job in Bonanza. Sure does. with a fine-tooth comb, not a sign of her. Well, go over it again. Get your gang together. Listen, that gang ought to be up to the mine doing the work right now. We're wasting a lot of valuable time hunting that kid. What about our deal? The deal can wait. Hello. Yes, this is Craig Allen. That's number nine. He's back! Sheriff Gilbert's back! Find her yet, Sheriff? She's still lost. Any clues? No, not yet. How'd you make out, Ferguson? We drew a blank, too, but Alan wants to keep searching. Are your men up to it? Men are, but the animals ain't. I figured to ride down to the Rancho Santa Martinez and pick up some fresh horses. 
How about you? All right, we'll meet your posse at the Black Sands Cutoff. Okay. Hey, what's all the excitement about? You go strike or something? No, they're looking for a little girl who got lost. Half the country's searching for her. Orphan kid, too, friend of Mr. Allen's. How do you like that? This is a punk time to ask Mr. Allen for a favor. We're not asking for favors today, Teddy Bear. I've got a better idea. Hands open, place your pencil. Excuse me, uh, you're Mr. Allen, aren't you? That's right. I'd like to have a talk with you. Right in. Thanks. Well, what's on your mind? A job. But that'll keep. Right now, I'd like to help you find that little girl. I have a partner out there who'll do his share, too. Well, we can use you, all right. You got a gun? This crook gummed up the machine. Don't get excited now, gentlemen. Probably a little short circuit or something. I'll make it good. Put a slug in there. Wait a minute. That ain't no slug. That's the kid's jewelry. Where'd you get that thing? Where's the rest of it? I found it. Nothing but a cheesy little gadget off this. What's all the hollering about? Just as I thought. Chip's bracelet. What's wrong? Take a look at this. Got her name on it and everything. Sure shooting those guys done away with that kid. We did not. Tell them where we found that thing, Roy. You've got us all wrong. We picked it up on the trail just outside of town. Save the rest of it for the sheriff. That was a cute idea, trying to join the posse to fool us. Sheriff's down at the Martinez Ranch. Telephone him to wait there. We'll take this pair with us. I'll phone him for you. Bring him outside. Come on. Don't be so familiar. Hello, Fuzzy. Has the sheriff gotten here yet? Yeah, he's over at the corral now, getting some fresh horses. Well, tell him we've captured the kidnappers. Kidnappers? Yeah. Jump in, captives. Come on. Got some news for you, Isabel. You found her? No, but we picked up some men who know something about this. Are these the two suspects, Mr. Allen? That's right. They tipped their hand down in my club, Sheriff. Take a good look at these men, Isabel. Have you ever seen them before? No. Are you sure? Positive. Did you take Chip away? Please tell me the truth. I am telling the truth, Miss Martinez. I haven't even seen the child. Neither is my pal. I wish I could help you, though. So do I. For some reason, I believe you. What makes you think they're lying, Craig? Because we found this on them. I told you I picked that up out on the trail. You keep out of this. Please, Craig. You're strangers around here, aren't you? That's right. We were looking for work until we heard about Chip, then we offered to join the search. Sure. We'd still like a crack at it. These pals of yours are crapping our style. Do I look like a kidnapper? Oh, you look better than that. So big and strong. He has honest eyes, Miss Martinez. Say, little Bill, what's the idea of sparking this big bandit? I'll have you understand you're talking to the woman I love. Take it easy, short stack. She's safe till I turn on the charm. Let's break this up. After they've defrosted in that jail, they'll talk, I guarantee you. In jail? Did you think you've pushed us around enough, Mr. Allen? I've told you the whole story. What else do you want to know? The truth. I was hoping you'd confess, but since you won't, take him away, Sheriff. All right, Ferguson. You're making a mistake, Sheriff. I think so, too, Craig. At least be fair about it.
first foot up and try to run under the trail again. Meet back here in an hour. All right. Two wings, two drumsticks. Share, share alike. Sure wish it was a turkey. Pretty good pickings, I'd say, for a couple of fugitives. Roy, if you ever see me picking up anything shiny again, I wish you'd just kick me where it hurts the worst. <laughs> that bracelet was hotter than a rivet. I'm kind of glad you picked it up, Teddy Bear. Otherwise, I might never have met Miss Martinez. Wonder if we'll ever see her again. Sure, why not? She'll probably be in the front row of our hanging. So will Lulavelle. And Alan. He's a funny guy. Yeah, but not funny ha-ha. Trouble with him, he's too rich. There's nothing wrong with being rich, Teddy Bear. It's how he got that way that counts. I know one way. He's a dice cheat. They ought to call him James of Chance Allen. Hey, what went with my leg? You ate it. I did not. Stop clowning, Teddy Bear, and finish your grub. Now, look here, Roy. If it was a wing, I'd say it flew off. But it was a leg. So it walked off. Here, eat mine. Sorry to interrupt, miss, but would you care for a finger bowl? This is hardly the kind of joke. I'm in trouble. We're in a little trouble ourselves. But I'm hungry. That makes us even all around. Oh, all right. Here, Teddy Bear, split it with Roy. Besides our names, what else did you hear? Enough to know that you're suspected of kidnapping me. Your chip? Uh-huh. While you're at it, why don't you swipe a couple of pies? Thoughtless of you, Teddy Bear. Suppose the posse drops in for dessert. If they did and caught her with you and me, they'd use us for dessert on the end of a rope. I'm evaporating from this country right now. They won't. They combed this territory yesterday looking for me. Suppose they recomb it today. Why did you run away, Chip? Because I had to. But you wouldn't understand about that. Well, we might if you explained a little. You're a mighty dangerous woman to us. You better break down and explain a lot. Suppose I do tell you. Would you promise never to tell anybody else? Sure, if you want it that way. All right. My dad told me where he buried his treasure. I know it sounds crazy, but he did things like that. He didn't trust people. You're a little bit like him, aren't you? Well, I was till now. Stick to the treasure. Where is it? In a mine up the mountain, in a box. In a box? What kind of a treasure is it? I don't know till I look, but it's something valuable. And I've got to find it before Isabel sells her mine to Craig Allen. She's my half-sister, and that makes her boss, because I'm underage. I bet you there's gold in that mine, Roy. No, there isn't. But there's something there. And whatever it is, I don't want Craig Allen to have it. Do you understand now? I think so. Why haven't you tried finding the treasure before, Chip? I did, right after Dad died. But I couldn't even get up to the mine on account of the snow. This is the first chance I've had. And I'm not giving up till I find it this time. Get the horses, Teddy Bear. You're going to help me? Mm-hmm. My partner's a mining fool, and I'm just a... Well, I'm just a fool, but let's go. Somebody come. Mr. Poppy, let's get me out of here. There's a cave in back. 
We can hide there. Come on. No, Chip. There's no use running. You've got to face him sometime. Let me go. I won't go back till I found it. Stay where you are, both of you. Chip, are you all right? I was feeling great up till now. Come on, you two. You're going back to town. Keep an eye on him, Sheriff. They may try to pull another fast one. Before you stick your foot in it again, Mr. Allen, I'd suggest you find out what the victim has to say. Well, I, uh... Go ahead, Chip. This is no time to stutter, stammer, or balk. Tell him. Here's the straight of it, Sheriff. I was hiding out on the trail and pretty hungry. I ran into Roy and Teddy Bear, and they were eating. So I barged in on their dinner. That sounds more like a blind date than the kidnapping, doesn't it, Sheriff? Well, yes. Miss Chip here is telling the truth. I am. While you're in a truthful mood, suppose you tell us why you ran away from home. That happens to be a secret I share only with people I trust. And people who keep their word. There's no use getting mad about it, Isabel. I've got my reasons. Chip, I think you've acted terribly, driving us half crazy with worry and getting these innocent men accused of kidnapping you. Somebody around here ought to apologize. You said you were looking for work. Would you be interested in a job on the Martinez Ranch? Well, that depends on who runs it. You run most everything around here, don't you, Mr. Allen? What do you mean by that? Well, I'm particular who I work for. You'll be working for me. Well, then it's a deal. Suit you, Teddy Bear? There ain't too much work to it. It suits me, too. I'm glad you approved, Chip. Because one of Mr. Rogers' jobs will be to see that you don't run away from home again. I think I can manage that all right. I'm pretty good at handling strays. What? I practically saved your life and you turned jailer on me. Young woman, we're going to halter break you. Oh, are you? I don't know. Are we, Roy? Well... <laughs> Too late, boys. You took the job. Oh, she's a hefty little filly. <clears throat> when the rooster starts to crow and all the chickens jump with joy. But to me, he's just a headache, a bunkhouse bugle boy. And so early in the morning, there's a neck I will destroy. If I ever catch that rooster, the bunkhouse bugle boy, someday we'll put him on the spot. Someday he'll wind up in a pot. Then we'll have him for our dinner, and the dumplings we'll enjoy. When we put the cowboy trimming to the bunkhouse bugle boy, with a cock a doodle doodle do, you can tell he's doing fine. When the day is breaking on the prairie, every cowboy in his bunkhouse bed is waiting for the time that our fine feathered friend is buried. When the rooster starts to crow and all the chickens jump with joy. But to me he's just a headache, a bunkhouse bugle boy. And so early in the morning, there's a neck I will destroy. If I ever catch that rooster, the bunkhouse bugle boy. Someday we'll put him on the spot. Someday he'll wind up in a great big pot. on the morning. Sometimes you just can't help singing. This is mighty fine singing weather, Miss Martinez. It's mighty fine grub, too. What's your etiquette? What's that? Shame on you, Fuzzy. Without food, he'll starve. Not with a reach like that, he won't. Well, I reckon I lost my appetite. I'll have to go get my vitamin pills. Vitamin pills? He's a shifty dog if I ever did see one. I've got to keep my eye on him. You better keep your other one on Little Bell. Oh. I noticed them looks you've been giving me. I fascinate you, don't I? A little. Why not? I knew it. You rang the bell with me, too. Well, there's only one trouble. You mean that clown with the fiddle? He's rich, and you're not. If you had $200, like Fuzzy, well, things might be different with well, us. You mean there's only 200 rocks standing between us? Well, how about my charm? Oh, I would marry the charm, but we'd have to live on the money. That's a challenge. Suppose I raise it. All right. 
You raise it, and then I'll tell you. Say, uh, Fuzzy, why don't you try some of them vitamin pills? Look what they're doing for him. Why the double-crossing coyote? Hey! Put that train down! <laughs> Somebody seems to be getting room service this morning. And I think I know who it is. Chip? Fuzzy! Fuzzy! What have you done? You struck him. I did not, but, I, but I'm going to. He tripped me. Which do you prefer? Being mashed to death quick, or just strangled slow and easy? No, settle it honorably, with knives or guns. <laughs> Looks like somebody's gonna have to milk another cow. Lulabelle, was that breakfast for Chip? Well, she didn't want to come down this morning, Miss Martinez. She doesn't feel so well. Now, clean up that mess, boys, and no more nonsense. I'll fix another breakfast. Now, you listen here. If there's any more trays to be carried around here, I carry them, or else we fight. It's kind of silly, don't you think? What's silly about it? One of us might get hurt. I got a better idea. Let's shoot it out. What you got there, boy? <laughs> I got to test these dice first. <laughs> Seven. Kind of lucky, ain't you? How would you like to win a fine horse and saddle? Shooting against what? Money that you've got. I bet you my horse and saddle against 200 bucks. Chicken, ain't you? You think so? Well, come on over to the corral. Short stack, I'm following you. <laughs> I see you girls are not seeing exactly eye to eye this morning. I just told her firmly that she'll not be allowed to leave the ranch again until the mine is sold. Then you started running. Well, what would you have done? I'd have held my ground and tried to reason with her. She's beyond reasoning. She's now staging a sit-down strike. Refuses to attend her own party tonight, and that just leaves me with the entire village on my hands. Roy, do you think you could reason with her? Why, sure. She didn't mean that jailer stuff about me. She's just a whimsical kid. Watch me. Who is it? It's me, Roy. Come in, Roy. See? Just a whim. Or was it a whim? How can you have the nerve to face me? When I got my back to you, I can't see which way they're coming. I thought you and I were friends. That's before you went over to the side of the enemy. Chip, I don't think you're being fair to Isabel. She's a pretty swell girl, and... Well, what I mean is, I think she's a... A pretty swell girl. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I trusted you. You still can. I think you can trust Isabel, too. Why don't you tell her about the treasure, Chip? Oh, no. She'd tell Craig Allen and he'd get my mine and the treasure, too. I'll make a deal with you. You tell her the truth and I'll guarantee you she'll go to the mine with us. Us? Sure. That's why I took this job, Chip. I'm seeing it through with you. It's a deal. Gee, Roy, I'm sorry I bobbed you. <laughs> I'll forget about that if you'll tell her you'll be at your party. That's the deal. Isabel, dear. Isabel, I'm a reformed character. No more running away. You couldn't drag me off the ranch. And the party tonight. I'll be there with bells on. That crash I heard. Who hit who? I didn't raise a hand to her. Then how did you do it? I made a deal with her. I promised Chip you and I'd ride to the mine with her, and she promised she'd tell you why she wants to go. Isabel, before Dad died, he told me he buried a box there. And I've got to find it before the mine changes hands. Oh, Chip, that was just one of his crazy dreams. I'll always believe in Dad. And if you'll come with me, I'll prove he wasn't crazy. Seems like she ought to have a right to do that. All right, Chip. Get your riding clothes. <gasps> oh, Isabel. You were right, Roy. She is a pretty swell girl.
Chi. We sort of had an argument. About me? Yeah. Chip said you were swell. I said you were swell. <laughs> Who won? I guess we both did. <laughs> oh, good morning, Craig. Take care of this horse, will you? Sorry I'm late, dear. Let's go inside. I'll be right with you, boy. All right. You're going to be disappointed in me, Craig. This will be the first time. I can't go into town with you. Why? Oh, I promised Chip I'd go up to the mine with her. Humor me this once, will you? Don't I always? What's going on up to the mine? Well, it seems Dad buried something up there for her, and whatever it is, it's got her worried. She wasn't even going to attend the party tonight until Roy talked her into it. I thought we'd better sign the papers for the mine. If you wanted a check for Chip's birthday, but it'll keep. Don't worry about it. You're going to an awful lot of trouble for Chip, Craig. Buying a worthless mine is hardly good business, and you know it. Let's call it a hobby. Besides, you know why I'm doing it. Chip's only part of the deal. I'm really sold on you, too, Isabel. Don't forget that. You never let me forget it. Will tomorrow do with the papers? I'll have the magistrate meet us in the morning. Then it's a promise, bright and early. See you at the party tonight. Wait, I'll walk out with you. When this game's over, you'll be known as Bear Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you give those dice a chance to defrost? Miss Chip wants your company. We're all taking a ride. Please come with us, Teddy Bear. It'll be a pleasure, Miss Chip. Short stack, this will have to keep. I'll get my horse. Hold it. What horse are you talking about? Well, our horse. You ain't won but half of him yet. Well, it's that half I'm worried about. Is this a hard ride? No, slow and easy. Why don't you let him borrow your half, Fuzzy? Well, all right. But treat him gentle. This game ain't over with yet, and when it is, I expect to own a whole animal, and in good condition. Don't scratch that saddle, either. I'll scratch your head one of these days. <laughs> the horse is ready. Coming right up. You will buy you a ring. You will live like a king in a palace, bright and sunny. But there's one thing in doubt that I must figure out. What's that? What'll I use for money? Oh. Gonna buy a new car with a shine like a star. Guess the whole thing strikes you funny. It's a beautiful scene, but I see what you mean. What'll we use for money? Maybe buttons, or poker chips, or bullets, or peanuts. Maybe I'll find a vein of gold. All you have to do is look around. But when I think of all that gold, think of the trouble it's going to be getting it out of the ground. You're about to confess that you'll settle for less. Get your jumps up, plain down funny. But I get so upset that I always forget. What'll I use for money? How about marbles or toothpicks? Jim, yeah. I use money. Maybe he'll find a vein of gold just like a lucky pup. Why, sure. But when I think of all that gold, I get kind of tired digging it up. Well, you can buy the moon for a wedding in two, for a sky that's blue and sunny. If you drop on your care, you're a rich missionaire. What will we use for money? <laughs> this is probably the first treasure hunt for the poor show. <laughs> you don't take much stuff in Chip's buried treasure, do you? No, I'm afraid she's a dreamer like Dad. He had what they call gold fever. Most mining men have it, but some of them do strike it rich. <laughs> Say, Chip, isn't that the cutoff we took to the mine last night? Uh-huh. But it's so rough, nobody uses it unless they're in a hurry. Well, by the looks of those tracks, somebody just used it in an awful hurry. Did you mention the treasure box to anybody? Yes, I think I mentioned it to Mr. Allen. Why? Well, I'll meet you at the mine. <laughs>
It's that new hand, Rogers. He must have taken the cut off. Cover up, Mark. What do you want? I thought maybe Mr. Allen came up here, did he? No, I haven't seen him since morning. Well, what's all this equipment for? I didn't know anybody was working this mine. Allen sent me up here to set up a drill and compressor. Sorry, my Rogers. May I? Yeah. Come right ahead, Miss Martinez. Anything wrong, Ferguson? Nothing I know of, miss, except Roger seems to think there is. Chip, you better start digging your trays. Teddy Bear, you better help us. It's over here. Shoot the light over this way, Roy. You hold the light. I'll take over. Did you know they were working this mine, Miss Martinez? Of course. Mr. Allen asked permission to start operations here, and I gladly gave it to him. Why do you ask? Well, it seems kind of strange to me that he'd go to so much trouble on a worthless gold mine. Especially when it isn't even his yet. <laughs> Does Rogers think we're digging for gold? Mr. Rogers, you seem to question Mr. Allen's intentions here, but you're wrong. Mr. Allen's not looking for gold. He's hoping to find manganese, and only hoping. <laughs> manganese? Exactly. And if he does find it, there's a contract already drawn up giving Chip half the profits. So you don't have to concern yourself for the future. Please leave that to Mr. Allen and me. I think we're capable of looking after our best interests. Okay. Isabel, look! We found it! Is that all there is? Well, they ain't even got a stamp on it. To my daughter Chip, to be opened on the occasion of her 16th birthday. Well, go ahead, open it. Oh, no. If that's the way Dad wanted it, there must be a reason. Well, you'll turn 16 at midnight. I'll open it then. It'll be sort of like Dad was at my party giving me a present. Really, Chip, aren't you being a little imaginative? Maybe I'm just being a little careful. Keep it for me until midnight. Gee, it's kind of shimmery in here. We'll ride on ahead. See you boys back at the ranch. All right. Goodbye, Roy. Bye. Thanks, Teddy Bear. You'd have thought she'd have took this along for a jewel box. I know that. I wonder if it holds the secret of this mine. Well, if it does, we're sunk. I should have had those papers signed today. That's your mistake. All I know is that this mine is full of gold. I saw the ore. Our problem is to get that letter before somebody else opens it. The mortar and pans I saw in the mine aren't used for working manganese. That's strictly gold mining equipment, which makes somebody an awful liar. That makes two of them. Teams of chance, Allen and Ferguson. Allen's the one to watch. He's pretty slick drawing up that manganese contract. It's got Miss Martinez fool completely. What happens if they strike gold? That's the point. She and Chip are out of luck. There's nothing we can do about it unless that letter tells us something. What's your hunch? Same thing. Except I've always got hunches about gold. I'm always wrong. This is one time you might not be. Push. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
started things off with the bang, Miss Isabel. I haven't seen Chip yet. Oh, she's fixing up for her entrance. You know, little girls take their birthdays pretty seriously, Roy. Little? I thought 16 was a ripe old age. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you're right, but since the old lady isn't downstairs, do you mind being pressed in the service? No. The cowboy and the senorita, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Roy Rogers, a very good friend of Chip's and of mine, with a very special song for all of you. The cowboy and the senorita met in Rosarita one night not so long ago. The cowboy and the senorita made the night much sweeter with words like I love you so. He said life on the range is such a lonely life. Won't you pack your shawl, acquire a draw, and be a cowboy's wife? They marry, and their plans all carry. They've a little cowboy, and oh, what a kid. Why don't folks do like the cowboy and the senorita did? He said, don't send me back, back to that lone prairie. I've got a saddle or two, or for me and for you. Come right away with me. They headed. That boss of yours is certainly winning him a lot of friends. And one in particular, if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Isabel. And that's where they hid. Why don't folks do like the cowboy and the senorita did? Thanks. I bet it's awful pretty outside in the moonlight. Shall we go see? No, Roy. You have a trick of appearing to sing to just one person. <laughs> That's no trick. I was. <laughs> well, I didn't deserve it after the things I said to you at the mine. Well, let's forget about the mine. I'd much rather talk about... About what? Well, Chip's birthday. <laughs> the Spanish saying is, lo que pasó, pasó. Is there's noche de fiesta? Is that what you meant? Well, I don't know, but it sure sounds pretty. <laughs> Those two seem to be getting pretty chummy. What about that guy? I'll get around to him later. Right now, there's something more important for you to take care of. Okay. Wait a minute. Not now. Miss Isabel! Chip is ready, and she looks like an angel. She wants you to see her. I'll go right up. Say, that looks too good to drop. Do you mind if I carry it? Oh, thanks, Mr. Rogers. It's a pretty big cake. Well, Chip's a pretty big girl. <laughs> Let me hear him rap. That's better. Shoot. Come on, man. What's the score now, boys? Oh, we're back where we started. We're getting no place fast, little Dell. Besides, I think these dice are loaded. Now, listen, short stack. If they was, I'd be ahead. Now, boys, don't fight too hard over me. The best man is bound to win. Well, that's me. But I think you ought to decide between us, little Dell. It's up to you now. I think we better deliver this cake. I'll think it over, but it's not easy. <sighs> oh, I got an idea how we can settle this in one swoop. That's just what I was thinking of. High dice, one toss. I'm game. Here, you first. Me first. Ha, ha, ha! 
A six. Look at that stub of weed. You can't beat me. The best you can do is tie me. Went up there on the roof. And I help it? It jumped like it had a mind of its own. Oh, yeah? Well, come on, let's go up and see if we can find it. My great grandma could be here, she'd really save the day. She'd do a little curtsy in hoops of great machine. Great grandma knew her etiquette when she was sweet sixteen. Around her neck, she wore a yellow ribbon. She wore it in the winter and the summer, so they say. If you asked her why the decoration, she'd say it's for my lover who is far, far away. My grandma on my father's side was tough. She never knew the meaning of fear. She liked her cider hard. Her men folks rough. For at 16, she was a hardy pioneer. Oh, lay, oh, lay. Get along, get along. Around get and along, around the wagon along. wheels are turning. A shooting bungalow along, and engines all along, along the trail. trail. Roll get along. For if the bossy gets this, we'll have pasty stew for breakfast, or we'll all be in jail. A lay wagon, a lay wagon, a get for California, or we'll all be in jail. <laughs> Mother was a lady of society. At sweet sixteen, my daddy caught her eye. And when he proposed with adequate propriety, she answered with this very sweet reply. Darling, don't you linger, put a ring around my finger. Tell the new photographers to save the month of June. Wear your white cravat, your high silk hat, and pay the preacher. At Niagara Falls, we'll have a happy honeymoon. Shoes, rise, everything nice, and now we come to me. The latest branch on the family tree. You know it's great, great to be 16. Jump until they turn out the light on. What I mean, give me some skin. You're on the beam, come on in. Thanks for a happy birthday. Pardon me, I think I'll go up and get Chip's letter.
Chip's letter, Roy. Well, where'd you leave it? It was lying on my desk blotter in my room. Thank Chip's letter is gone. Uh -huh. Oh, perhaps you mislaid it. I remember distinctly putting it on my desk in my room. It disappeared. Things don't just disappear. No, they don't. Maybe Mr. Allen knows something about it. What are you trying to say, Rogers? I saw Ferguson coming out of Miss Isabel's room. Just a minute ago, I saw him hand you something. Are you trying to imply that I had my man steal that letter? Take it any way you like. It's a pretty serious charge, Rogers. You're going to have to back it up. Mr. Allen is perfectly right. He's a guest in this house, and you've embarrassed me as well as him. You've accused me of stealing something. You're going to have to prove it. Search me. Please, Craig, that won't be necessary. All right. I guess if you had it on, you wouldn't offer to be searched. This is ridiculous. I'm sorry this had to happen, but I'm... I'm leaving tonight. I suppose I was a little rude and embarrassing you like this, but that still doesn't make him right. It's better that he goes, Isabel. That type always causes trouble. You can take my word for it. Now, come on, you're not going to let that spoil your party, are you? Come on, forget it. I'll try, Craig. That's it. I can't see it. You got a match? No, I don't carry matches. Well, I reckon I'll have to use one of my own, then. Another six. We gotta put an end to this. You're right. I got a deck of cards over the bunkhouse. No, no, no more of them gambling devices. I got it. In two minutes, the winner will have the money, the horse and saddle, and the rights to propose to Lula Bell. And the loser, he gets a nice funeral. That's it, a duel. That's the only way to settle it. Well, sunrise is a nice time. Oh, sunrise. Right now, it seems to me you're showing a little touch of white leghorn. Nobody can say that to me and live. What do you want, the old rules or the new ones? You make them. Back to back, bub. Back to back? I say, ready, take six paces and turn. And then, and then what? That'll be up to you. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Where'd he go? I'm on fire. Put me out. Put me out. Bring water. Oh, oh, the letter. The letter. Chip's letter. Oh, Miss Isabel. Chip, the letter. Hey, me and you, we ain't settled yet. Get back to you. Ain't no use putting off till tomorrow what ain't been finished today. No. Doesn't look like you'll be here tomorrow. What? What are you talking about? I can have Jewel short stack any night in the week. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Your partner's been fired. He's over in the bunkhouse now getting his gear together. Well, I'll have to see about this. This Jewel can wait. This is business. <laughs> Would you like to read it first, Chip? You read it, Isabel. I'm too excited. Chip, darling, you already have the treasure. It is the bracelet I gave you last year. Scratch its surface lightly, and you'll find it has a value greater than you think. That and my love is all I have to give you on your 16th birthday, Dad. That's all there is, Chip. Just the bracelet? Isabel, you don't really think Dad was... I'm afraid we always did think so, Chip. Well, I guess I know it too now. <laughs> For some reason, I think it was a fine treasure hunt while it lasted. Say, I don't even have the bracelet. Oh, I have it, Chip. It's in my desk at my office. Would you like to have me run into town and get it for you? Well, I'd like to know what it's really made of, but <laughs> tomorrow will do just as well. I don't agree with you, Chip. It's bound to be another disappointment, but I think we should get this nonsense over and done with once and for all. You're a big girl now, Chip. Can you take it? Sure I can. I feel differently about everything now. You just feel grown up, dear. I think it's a good idea, Craig. Go ahead. I'll be back before the party's over. Come on, Matt. If you want to see Roy, you'd better hurry. He's leaving the ranch. Leaving the ranch? Why? He'll tell you, hurry. He's in the bunkhouse. Roy! Roy! What's the matter? We're
we're shoving off, Chip. By popular demand. Who's? Everybody's, I guess. It's better this way. Not for me, it isn't. Why, I wasn't even consulted. And I've got something to say about the matter, too. Wait till I get Isabel. Well, it wasn't her idea entirely, Chip. We resigned. There's no use bothering Isabel. She has Mr. Allen to advise her, and... That's the trouble with her. Allen. Why are you so slow to catch on? Isabel expects you to put up a fight, not just lie down licked. Please believe me. I'm a grown woman, Roy. I know. Now's your chance. Alan's going to get my bracelet at his office. Please do it my way this time, and I'll tell you about the treasure after. Wait a minute. What treasure? It doesn't matter. We found the letter, and I guess they were right about Dad. But that doesn't mean you're right about Isabel. Here, amuse yourself. I'll straighten this other matter out. Promise me you'll wait. All right. Scratch the what? Move your hand. I can't see. Teddy bear, I've got a hunch that old guy was crazy like a fox. There's more here at stake than just a bracelet, and Alan knows it. We've got to beat him to the punch. Well, I don't get it. Where are we going? The Bonanza Club. We can't beat them, eh? Chip said they already left. It's a long way around to the road. We'll cut right over the mountain. Is Alan back yet? No, he's still to Martini's ranch. Yes, I know. He's going to meet us here. We're we'll waiting off. That's a job for the sheriff. You got away with the bracelet, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but that's not all. They took $2,000. Are you kidding? There wasn't any money in that desk. I said they took $2,000. Oh, I see. You'd better get up to the mine. I've got an idea Rogers is going to head up there before morning. I'll take care of the mine and Rogers. You look after that legal stuff. I've got an appointment with a magistrate in the morning. Good. But don't worry about a thing, Mac. Hello? I know I'm late. We had a bit of trouble down here. I'm terribly sorry, Craig. What can I say? You were right, that's all. Of course I will. Right away. Isabel, what's the matter? Roy and Teddy Bear. They took some money from Mr. Allen. Your bracelet's gone, too. You mean they stole it? I'm afraid so, Chip. Lula Bell, tell Fuzzy and the boys to saddle up right away. They'll be needed in the searching party. Yes, Miss Isabel. I just can't believe Teddy Bear did it. I just can't. I know what you're thinking, Isabel. We sure pick them, don't we? We sure do. Here it is. Light a candle, dig in darkness. Whoever wrote that must figure everybody around here carries candles with them like Chip. Wait a minute, maybe you got something there. Chip's candle. Remember, it went out in the mine shaft. Yeah, sure. It was dark, too. 
And we dug. You've dug deep enough. Now reach. All right, tie him up, boys, and we'll make prompt delivery. Thanks for the beacon. Now, wait a minute. That's evidence. Now, where's the money you stole? Did Alan say we'd stolen money? Yeah, just 2,000 bucks. He hadn't got anything on him. Nothing here, either. I'll take a look in their saddlebags. Where's Ferguson now? He's at the mine. What do you want to know for? Well, things are shaping up just the way I thought. Fuzzy, you really don't think we'd steal, do you? Oh, I don't know about you, Roy, but he would. Did you find anything in their saddlebags? No, just a change of clothes. There's some writing on that bracelet that's mighty important to Chip. Maybe the answer to the mine. Right, sir? Let me see it, Bob. Light a candle digging dark. Don't make sense to me. Nothing would. Well, dust to us, that's why we borrowed it. You don't want to see Chip bunkered out of everything her dad left her, do you? Why, of course not. Well, then don't string along with Alan. Who says we are? Well, you're playing right into his hands, holding us on this trumped-up robbery charge while Ferguson's digging into that mine. Don't forget, Alan takes over tomorrow, lock, stock, and barrel. Are you sure he's not buying a lemon? I'm not sure of anything. All I'm asking is a square deal for Chip. I've got a hunch that mine is loaded with gold. But we'll never know unless you boys are willing to play the hunch with us. What do you say, boys? Well, I'll take a chance. If it's for Chip, count me in. Can't lose anything but time. Sure, let's try. All right, Roy, we'll string along with you. Thanks. What do you say? Oh, it's all right with me. That's bad. <laughs> I'm looking for Ferguson. He around? I'll call him. Hey, Matt, come out for a minute. It's fuzzy. Any sign of those thieving dogs who got Mr. Allen's roll? Yep, we caught him. And I hear you say you captured those bandits. Where are they? Well, I uh, don't like to point. <laughs> they polite, but they're right behind you. Huh? Now, let's keep this peaceable and happy. You fellas realize you're working with a couple of jailbirds? The law's after them. Well, the law ain't proved nothing again yet. We're inclined to believe somebody framed him. Hey, stay out of that mine. That's Mr. Allen's property. Not till tomorrow. And maybe not then. All right, take him away and tie him up. Come on. I think it was right about here. I've got it. This crack here. I bet there's a tunnel on the other side. All right, guys, they got this wall plastered up to make it look like real rock. Let's get those picks and shovels and tear into it. Hey, this is Adobe Brick. Stand back and let me lean on it. All right. Push it. Hear that flash. What do you think, Teddy Bear? Gosh, this ain't manganese. It's high-grade gold ore. Then your hunch about Alan was right. Well, let's get those sacks and start loading up. Come on, Teddy Bear, this is the last load. Oh, I hate to stop now, Roy. This is the labor of love. Oh, quick stall and help with this cart. I hope this works, Roy. Say, what happens if we bump into the posse looking for us? What do you think we're taking three wagons for? Insurance. One of them's bound to get through. We've got to have a load in front of the courthouse by 10 o'clock to prove there's gold here. Otherwise, Alan wins hands down. That's one hour from now. Matter of the Williams estate, Judge. Hello, Isabel. Chip. How do you do, Mr. Allen? Judge. Sit down. Chip, uh, you are fully acquainted with the proceedings which I'm about to conduct? Yes, Judge. Isabel selling the mine to Mr. Allen, and that's that. Clearly put. Now, uh, you just sit back and relax. Freeman, uh, get me the fire. All set? Roy, look, the law! We're sunk for fair now! Don't bet on that. They'll outrun us with these heavy wagons. We'll take the felt and cut off. Let's go. This trail crosses the road below. We can pick them up there. We've got them now. They'll never make it for that road. 
Ford. Mighty nice thing you're doing, setting up a cash estate for this young girl. This certified check will provide for her education. <laughs> Probably gets you a good husband, Chip. for disturbing the peace. Well, I'll plead guilty, Your Honor. But first, you've got to hear how a manganese mine turned into a gold strike. And a mighty rich one, too, Chip. You haven't signed it yet, have you? No, but say that again about the gold. Your Honor, this man is interfering with the due process of law. Do something about it. It's too late, Alan. There's enough gold ore in the assayer's office right now to make you out the biggest liar in 40 states. This may surprise you, Isabel, but it came from the Williams mine. Chip was right about the treasure. That must be the assayer now. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what? Did you say approximately $800 a ton ore? Incredible. Why, that's the richest vein found in these parts in years. Put it on paper as soon as possible. I want a certified assay. This puts a different complexion on the matter, Mr. Allen. Were you aware that there was gold in that mine? Why, of course not. I, I can't understand it at all. It seems to me I can understand it. Somebody must have known about it. I'll give you two guesses. Allen, this looks very much like misrepresentation on your part, perhaps even fraud. Your Honor, this, this development surprises me as much as anybody else. But I don't think we should discuss it at this time. It's a much more important matter to settle. I want this man arrested and charged with robbery. He stole $2,000 from my office. You'll have to prove that, Ellen. I can prove it, all right. Where's my manager, Matt Ferguson? Coming right up! <laughs> Mr. Ferguson has a statement to make, folks. Haven't you busted? Well, I did have, but I'm kind of forgetful. <laughs> Where are you taking him? To the memory room. Wait a minute. It's coming back to me. 
I'm beginning to remember. Now cough it up. Well, there wasn't any robbery. Now take it easy, Matt. I haven't any choice, Ellen. It's either you or me. Alan framed charges against this fellow and Rogers just to get him into trouble. What about this, Alan? I withdraw the charges. The mine stays under the present ownership, doesn't it, Judge? That's exactly where it stays, till the court gives you full consent to sell it again. Freeman, hold those two men for the sheriff. Thank you, Judge. I hope I didn't cause you too much trouble. No trouble at all. That's what the law is for. Chip, I think this calls for a celebration. A real party. Oh, Isabel, I'd love it. You're all invited. Especially you, Judge. Will you come? Will I? I wouldn't miss a party at the Martinis Ranch for all the ipsa factos in Blackstone. <laughs>
enchilada. Here it come along, here is little song by an enchilada. Patches on his feet, nothing on his feet, try an enchilada. It's a silly whim, patronizing him, but you really gotta. Who's the man in question spreading indigestion? He's the enchilada man. When he sells big ones, we shout, Enchiladas! But when he sells little ones, he whispers, Enchiladas! 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 Oh, what's he leaving for? He could sell some more. Well, you see, there's not one. Everybody took them, he'll get more and cook them. He's the Enchilada Man! Your airy old prairie, I love you so. Their life is sunshine. 